This is Twit. Earlier this week, a security researcher posted a paper on something called Crack, spelled with a K, that threatens to basically destroy Wi-Fi privacy using WPA2 encryption. You can see it right here. It's affecting pretty much any device that supports Wi-Fi. And uh, the internet, as you might expect, lost its love and mind. Joining us is Matty Vanhoef, the researcher behind the discovery of Crack. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's it's our pleasure to have you here. So, Maddie, uh, let's start with the big picture. Crack stands for mm -hmm. Key Reinstallation Attacks. Uh, unpack that a, a little bit for those who aren't clear on how this actually affects WPA2 Wi-Fi security. So, essentially, what happens when... Uh say your smartphone or laptop connects to a protected network, a so-called handshake is being executed, which uh, negotiates uh, a key, an encryption key, that will be used to actually scramble and encrypt all the information that you are sending so that people nearby cannot receive it. Now, it's essential that that key will only be used once because otherwise this uh, encryption, the scrambling can be undone. And we found that here it goes wrong. We can actually force an Android uh, phone or a smartphone or any smartphone or a laptop into using that key multiple times. In other words, into reinstalling this key. And then we can undo the encryption so we can recover uh, the data that your device is sending. Wow. And you're talking, I mean, we're so used to seeing, I, uh, like I'm an Android user, I'm so used to seeing eh, this happened on Android and it being very specific to a certain classification of, of devices, manufacturers, whatever. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about, I mean, it's basically internet, you know, devices that connect to the internet, which is everything. I mean, does this also include like, you know, historically unsecured devices like IoT devices in the home, smart home products, that sort of stuff? <laughs> So I would say that nearly all devices that uh, implement Wi-Fi that connect, can connect to a protected Wi-Fi network, most of them are uh, indeed affected by this attack. Wow. Now, interestingly, there, there are some operating systems, um, which is, for example, Windows, which does not completely follow the standard. And because of that, they are not affected by the biggest attack. However, I would assume that most Wi-Fi devices are indeed affected by it. Mm -hmm. Now, on your site, crackattacks.com, uh, again, spelled with a K, mm -hmm. uh, you answer a lot of questions about this. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that you've been seeing uh, reported on this vulnerability as the week has progressed? Because there's been a lot of coverage on this. What were some of those biggest mm -hmm. misconceptions? So that's a good question. Um, I would say one of the misconceptions that I've seen a few times is that carrying out this attack would require the password of the network, and that's not the case. You do not need to have uh, the password uh, to perform uh, this attack. Um, maybe one other misconception is um, a lot of people say you need to be really close to the network. And of course, you need to be within range to be able to connect to the wireless network. However, there, there are special uh, antennas which allow you to connect to a, a Wi-Fi network and carry out the attack, say, from a distance of up to two or maybe even three kilometers. Oh, so, wow. yeah, you have to be nearby. But on the other hand, you also don't have to be that close. Hmm. So we've heard that uh, iOS, the newest version of iOS, has a fix and Windows has a fix. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've heard all that. And what I've read is that that means we're less vulnerable. Uh, can you explain a little bit about what that means? I mean, are we still vulnerable even though it's been patched? Well, I would say that... Uh as a home user, if you then update uh, your Windows and your iOS devices, in that case, I would say you're secure. Um, when you connect to a more enterprise, a more business network, for example, a university or a company that has uh, a lot of uh, access points, so a lot of places where the wireless signal is being broadcasted, then there could still be a bug in the equipment that they use. But for your home network, if you just update your Windows or your laptops and your smartphones, then you're already safe. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, a lot of times with discoveries like this, especially researchers discover a vulnerability, it's well before mm -hmm. anyone is actually doing anything with it. Are you aware of any tools mm -hmm. at this point that are kind of, that, that are act, you know, resulting in someone actively exploiting uh, this vulnerability at this point? Is, have there been any signs that that's actually happening at this point? 
So I'm not aware of uh, any people or hackers that are currently using this tool to carry out uh, attacks. Um, it could be that someone made a tool but has not yet made it public. That's mm -hmm. one possibility. But I do think that uh, in making a program to carry out these attacks, it requires some technical expertise. So it could be, say, a few weeks before this happens. And then the question is also, will they release this tool uh, or not? But of course, once such a program is available, then it becomes very easy for normal IT people to download such a tool and uh, perform uh, the, our attacks. I'm interested in the process, your process. Like how long have you been working on this paper? What gave you the idea? I mean, was it, did you get a tip from someone or was it just something that mm -hmm. you were sitting, you know, around in the shower or something and it's just, you just thought of it? How, mm -hmm. how does it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we've been uh, researching the security of uh, Wi-Fi networks for uh, quite a while already, I think more than uh, four years. Uh, and while we were working on existing research, which uh, was testing some other security aspects of a Wi-Fi network, I at one point basically just had an insight. I was reading some uh, code. I was looking at one particular line and I just had an insight. Hey, what if something goes wrong here? What if this key is being installed? Um, so it's a combination on the, of on the one hand studying this wireless security for a long time already and having the right insight at the right moment. Um, and that happens, I think, around half a year ago. And then we started to investigate it in detail. We wrote a paper. Then in the summer, we contacted the companies. Um, and here we are today. And is, it, is it competitive? Are there, were there other people trying to get there before you? Is it, um, is it like what we, you know, like a journalist trying to chase a story? Mm -hmm. Or is it really just you guys? Well, I would assume that it was uh, mainly us uh, because... This technology that protects your Wi-Fi network, so the one we attacked, it has already existed for more than 14 years. And during that time, no one has uh, found an attack uh, like us against it. So I, a lot of people assumed that it was secure. I mean, there are even mathematical proofs which try to uh, formally prove that it is correct. So it, it's a very surprising finding. And with that in mind, I don't think there was... Uh, there were other researchers that were really looking at this. Mm -hmm. Now, you've also posted a script on GitHub that basically tests mm -hmm. access points uh, for the crack mm -hmm. attack. Um, if mm -hmm. if someone you know downloads that and and finds that their access point is vulnerable, I mean, what is the recommendation there? Obviously, updating the firmware, as you as you say, updating it when there's a security update. But uh, given that there are a lot of devices that there won't be a security update, <laughs> Android, uh, and you know a lot of other devices that just aren't mm -hmm. typically updated with the same frequency as as others that that are. I mean, what is the the recommendation there? Is it that you just don't use them anymore, or like where do you go for, with that? So that's a, a good question. So if you find that your access point is vulnerable or in the future, I will also release the scripts to test if your, uh, if your Android or your smartphone is vulnerable. In that case, you can try to put some pressure on the company if a lot of people start to complain. Um, but of course, it, it will be likely that certain devices will not get updated. And in fact, I'm quite sure of that. Um, that's indeed a problem. Um, so what ordinary users can do is first and for all, when they visit the website, make sure that HTTPS is being used, then all your data is still uh, properly protected. Um, and we are also going to look into ways to, other ways to try to lower the impact of attacks. So we are looking into things where if devices don't get updates, we are it's still possible to protect them somehow. Um, but that's... Uh, something we are we are still investigating. Yeah, and that's the biggest frustration for me. I mean, I, I, I don't even know how <laughs> how much faith I have that a lot of these devices are going to get updated. Like Google mm -hmm. has an update uh, scheduled for, I think, their November security update. But as we know mm -hmm. with Android, that's the first mm -hmm. step. And from there, it, it falls in the hands of the OEMs to, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to actually take it to the finish line and bring it to their devices. But that doesn't help a device that's three or four years old that doesn't get updates anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of left out in the cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's uh, quite a known problem with Android, that if they have a security vulnerability, that a lot of people do not get updates. And uh, 
uh, also with other Wi-Fi devices. Um, it's true. I don't expect that uh, a lot of them will be updated. I think the latest one, the latest ones, yeah, they will get an update. But indeed, a lot of people will be left in the cold, and that's very unfortunate. Uh, also, especially with the Android case. Um, Attackers could abuse this with, uh, they, they could combine this with other weaknesses, with other vulnerabilities, uh, which would really make the impact uh, quite bad. Yeah, I suppose we'll be following this. Matty Vanhoff, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to, to mm -hmm. talk with us. And secondly, going backwards, thank you for discovering this because everybody needs to know about it. And it's super important. Um, so it's really great work that you're doing. Where can people follow uh, everything, all the research and everything that you're doing online? So I have a Twitter account online. Uh, you can follow that. It's uh, my last name, Vanouf M, uh, with the M at the end. Um, I also have a blog, but that doesn't get updated that frequently. So the best thing is to follow my Twitter feed. Right on. Thank you again, Maddie, and uh, best of luck with your research. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for having me. Take Thank care. Thank you.